Hello there viewers, welcome to another Tactic Tester on the channel. Now today we have another Ryan Cassidy special called the Thermal Incidery 2. It is a 4-4-2 formation and we have had a lot of success viewers at a number of different clubs. So we will be overviewing as many clubs as we possibly can. But to get this tactic yourself, you need to head to the Discord. The link is down below. Uh, head to the Discord and there will be a section called Ryan's T Tactics. Just look for the name. You can download it straight in there. But if you do want to just copy what he does uh, from, his, from this screen to your screen, I will be showing you everything that you need today, viewers. Let's get going. Now, ignoring the fact that we are at the end of the season and Angers have finished in fifth place, which we will overview in a sec, this is the tactic itself. That's why, viewers, I'm cutting out the middleman. I'm not doing the before bit because why need to when I can just show you the tactic after and show you how good it performed at the same time. Okay, we have two pressing forwards here on attack. That always works very well. Uh, I like two forwards this, this season. We have an inverted winger on attack. And a winger on attack on the left-hand side. We have a Roman playmaker, a box-to-box -box midfielder, both on support roles. And at the back, viewers, two wing-backs, both on... No, one's on attack, sorry. One's on automatic, so that will be depending on what you put here, I believe. Let me know down in the comments if that is correct. So, really, it is attacking. And we also have two uh, defenders, one on bo uh, ball playing defender, one centre defence on defend, both on defend. And the sweeper-keeper, viewers on defend as well. Now we will go through individual instructions set to the position so you can see it here. Uh, so if you want to load it through yourself, this is what you will need to input. The crossing is at the far post. Take notes on that viewers. Uh, dribbling more on the Roman playmaker. Interesting stuff. Uh, there we go. And on to the defense here. Both center backs. You'll see less things on the center backs. But there we have it. And on the goalkeeper, finally, there we go. Now, we have a mentality of attacking viewers. In possession, this is what it looks like. A fairly wide formation passing into space. Low crosses, big fan, and work the ball into the box. Of course, that is the most uh, prominent one that we will see selected on here. Playing out of defense, but we're not looking at anything else. We're not uh, sort of focusing on one thing. We're letting the team decide what they want to do. Now, we're playing a slightly more direct pass and directness, but with an extremely high tempo. We are running at defence as fast as we possibly can, viewers. Uh, let's have a look at in transition. It is a Gagan press, distributing the ball quickly to the fullbacks through short kicks. Out of possession, though, we are using the offside trap. A standard line of engagement with a higher defensive line. Unique, compact, I like it. That's kind of the beauty with a 4-4-2. That would actually work quite well if you think about it because usually in formations you have a position here or here maybe and that obviously cuts out those sections. But if you have a, a flat 4-4-2, you'll have attacking players in behind your midfield and defence or a defensive midfielder in behind your striker and your midfield. So maybe making it more compact will stop those roles from happening. I like it, Ryan Cassidy. Genius. Of course he is. Using tighter marking. Uh, pressing intensity, very oh, extremely urgent actually viewers, and staying on feet with defensive narrow width. Nice. So yes, viewers, from previous experiments, Angers are around this mark here, the 12th to 14 mark on season preview. Uh, but we can see here they missed out on Champions League football just by five points, finishing in fifth place behind Monaco, but above Lyon. So that is... That is high. And Rennes is, is, is a very good team as well. Lille, they're finishing high above all of those teams. Now, we have this man. We did mention this man in one of the tactics beforehand where we use Angers. This guy scores a lot of goals, and he's not, he's not exceptional. Not one busy exceptional, but in the league, he scored 28 viewers in 38 appearances and got 9 assists. So, he's, he, he had 37 goal contributions in 38 games. That's exceptionally good. I would be very happy with that. A very high average rating in the league is 7.46. Got to be happy with that. On the assists, though, we have this man, Bobachon. Uh, 20 assists, the highest in the league. Uh, very good. It's no surprise that uh, PSG dominated the rest of the stats. Player of the match, I'm sure we have someone there. Joint fourth place, joint third place, actually. But Hulken, uh, who obviously played more games than the rest of the, uh, the lineup, that is why he's not finishing in the higher spots. 
Quick overview here though, 34 goals for that man, his strike partner 21, and there we have assist wise, three players getting double figures on assist, one getting higher than 20. Uh, average rating though, look how many players had a good average rating, that's what you like to see by the end of the season. Now we're going to have a look at the analysis page here. Uh, these are the goal times early in the game. But we have 54 goals being scored inside the, the, the square box around the penalty spot. Uh, 35 in the six-yard box there. Eight goals in total outside the box. And assist locations, we can see 18 goals from one cross, uh, 24 from the other side crossing. 22 of the assists coming from inside the box, 14 just outside and 15 outside of that section around the halfway mark but if we have a look at goal types place shots were very high headers 28 so that's crossing or corners and we will see from goal assists 20 goals were scored from corners viewers 20 so if you do download this tactic and 23 from crosses really good that is exceptionally good. Three balls were 19. Uh, Clear-cut chances, 124 clear-cut chances were made using this formation. You've got to be happy with that. Let's take a quick look, actually, at the set pieces because I know Ryan likes to input his own set piece, and he has done it. So this is kind of a little inside on what I really like to do as well on the attacking. So you you aim for the near post, and you get your two center uh, you you get your two centre backs, usually the best headers on the pitch, to attack the near post and to go forward on this near section. And that is how Ryan Cassidy gets so many goals from corners. You can see if I flick to the other side, it is exactly the same. And he's got one one guy uh, attacking the ball from the edge of the area, two guys at the far post. That is, that is simple. That's simply it. And he's scoring so many goals from corners. Unbelievable stuff. Santa Clara is up now. And as you can see by this season preview, they were predicted to finish in 13th place. But let me tell you, viewers, they did not finish in 13th place. Oh boy, no, they didn't. They finished in 5th place, very high up the league, and finishing above some of the best teams in Portugal. Now, that, that team there... I've learned recently, has a lot of money, so it doesn't surprise me that they actually managed to finish quite high in the league. Uh, but ignoring that, Santa Clara, who had no right to finish anywhere near the top, have done so. Now, they might have been quite far off of Braga in fourth place, but I still think they have done really good. Now, they have a man in the top scoring list, uh, Gilherm Schettin. Probably not, viewers. Probably not. But he is one of their best players. And no surprises that he has scored the most goals for the team in the league. Assist-wise, they have Rafael Ramos with 11. They've got to be happy with that. He is a fullback, viewers. So probably got, oh, he's got really high crossing. No surprises where their goals are coming from. But these players, viewers, they're, not, they're nothing special. They're nothing special whatsoever. But they are just performing very well as a team because of this tactic. Uh, 19 goals there. Chryson had 13 goals. And by the looks of it, there's not a lot of goals scored, which tells me that they were very good defensively. Assist-wise, 13 and 13 there for Ukra, uh, both on that right-hand side. So the right-hand side was very deadly for them. And the centre midfielder there from Iraq, of all places, 11 goals and 12 assists. He is probably their best performer. It would not surprise me. There he is. Uh, the uh, the average rating, he has the highest at 7.34. Now, this is actually quite remarkable. They don't have that many greens here for the average rate and they still managed to finish really high in the league and again I think it's because uh, defensively they must have been really good so I'm gonna have a look at that well they were 10th in least conceded so maybe they were just scored the goals at the right time now clean sheets wise they were joint 14th so again it's it because it, it, most goals that well I suppose they're up there they're actually up there second most goals in the league so they actually have performed quite well in the league scoring goals I'll take that back. Maybe they did. Analysis-wise, then, you can see the goal times again. That 31 to 45-minute mark being the highest. They did score quite a few late goals. But look at the combination here. 68 around the penalty spot. 35 in the six-yard box. 5 and 8 either side. Just the nine goals from the outside. None from any further back. Assist locations. We have a... It's very widespread, viewers, actually. Uh, a lot coming from that right-hand side, which we already established from those two players uh, on that right side. 23 from inside the box. 23 from outside. 21 from the left-hand side. 14 from around the halfway mark or behind. Very good stuff. Goal types. Play shot was high, 72. Uh, but goal assists, again, corner. 19 corners 
sat your corners up properly viewers it may save your season through balls were 29 and crosses were 22 a very strong season for santa clara with 117 uh, clear cut chances created on to real batiste now and in the spanish league they have somehow managed to get champions league football now 71 points they managed to knock out sociedad valencia sevilla all down to the europa league even athletic club Celta Vigo is normally up there too, so they've actually really overperformed, and that's great to see, viewers. Let's have a look to see whether they have any, any players up there or in the round. Borja Iglesias actually scored the most goals throughout the season, and Nabil Fakir and Joaquin both up there with assists. Lionel Messi had an extremely good assist season, uh, 28. That's probably, it's got to be his highest, surely. Uh, but let's see. He's nothing special, is he, viewers? But he's just got good attributes in the right places, I'd imagine. And that's the reason. And he's penalty taker, I, I presume. So he has done very well there. But still, that is a very good season. Just eight points behind Atletico Madrid. I'm intrigued to see their past positions to see how they managed to get on. So for a long period of time... They, they had a bad run, to be honest, viewers. Mid-table side for a long time. And then by the end of the season, they picked up a lot of victories and finished strong. So that's disappointing because they obviously started very well, dropped down midway through the season, but they picked it back up. You just think maybe a couple more wins around here, you would be looking to see whether they picked up third place, but still very comfortable. Uh, they actually knocked down the fifth round of the Copper Del Rey. If I haven't shown any of the cuts before, it's because it's something like this. It's nothing really too important. Squad-wise then, now average rating, we have a lot of players who are green. Nabil Fakir, for one, has a 7.53 average rating. That is so high and very good for a man of his calibre. Uh, 13 goals and 21 assists for him. But if we do look on goals, the both the strikers managed to get plus 20, with Borja getting 28 in total, of course, that we've seen before. Assist-wise, 21 assists from Nabil Fakir. Joaquin with 18. That needs to be changed, though. Uh, that he is 38. They need to buy a better right midfielder, although they do have uh, Roger. Roger, I think he is in their reserves, who they can use. And they also even have Diego Lanez, who turns out to be one of the best players in the world, viewers. So they have uh, some great players coming through to use them. Now, uh, other assist-wise, we can see the striker there getting 10 assists. Very good from him. Other than that, not too impressive, but it still doesn't matter. They did perform very well. Tactically, then, we can see the goal times were spread out a little bit more uh, just either side of half time, but 60, 67 sorry, goals scored in the around the penalty spot, 34 there, and I, one goal on each side of the weird area there on the pitch, which must be a really tight angle. Fair play to them. Uh, let's have a look at goal types, though. 85 placed shots, 21 headers, goal assists. 15 worse from corners, and as we can see on this part of the section here, 26 from the left-hand side, 16 from the right-hand side, 28 inside the box, 15 outside the box, 14 from the halfway mark or behind. Clear-cut chances, they created 132 clear-cut chances, a very good conversion rate on those clear-cut chances, which is probably why they find themselves quite high up in the league. That's three teams, though, who performed very well, and I've still got one more for you. And that last one is Bolton Wanderers. Now, Bolton, of course, start with minus 12 points. But if you work it out and you add those 12 points on, they would have won the league easily. Absolutely easily. In the Sky Bet League one, they would find themselves back in the championship. They have the best record of 26 wins, 9 draws and 9 losses in the league. They still went up though through the playoffs. So that just goes to show that this tactic can work even lower down the leagues when you have hardly any players. Very good. Uh, you got to be happy with that one. So there's no surprises then. We find some of the players in the player stats. Eddie Brown here, he scored 34 goals in 45 appearances with 5 assists. A great season for him with a 7.31 uh, average rating. We also have him highest on the average rating there. Uh, but we also have Ronan Darcy who had the most assists. Quite a low tally really considering the amount of games that they play with 16. And Eddie Brown also getting uh, joint second. Well, sorry, they got he got second Man of the Match uh, awards with 8 in total, though, Eddie Brown kind of carried this team with goals. 
uh, with the other strike partner only getting 14 goals in 56 games. I'd be disappointed with that return. He got five assists as well. Uh, 18 assists was the highest. Josh Emmanuel, uh, the right back, also getting 15. So still quite a good uh, running for the right back there. Good average ratings for across the team. Let's have a look more into the tactic. And if we go to the tactic and have a look at goals, we can see here again around the halftime mark was when the most goals were scored. 55 around the penalty spot, 35 in the uh, six yard box, just nine outside of the box and two even further back. Goal types, again, play shot. Headers were 21. Goal assists, crosses were 29 crosses, viewers. A really high amount of crosses. And we can see from the assist location, 22 from the right, 20 from the left, 26 from inside the box, 15 just outside. Seven further back. Clear-cut chances, though. We have made just 97 clear-cut chances. So that's a lot lower. And they've played more games. But still, the conversion rate, viewers, is disgusting. 97 chances created, clear-cut, 70 were put away. That is such a good conversion rate, uh, probably from that one guy. But still, it's managed to carry Bolton into League One, uh, out of League One side. They've done very well, and this tactic is amazing. So there we have it then, viewers. Let me know, what do you think of that one? A nice standard 4-4-2, but with a little bit of a few changes, it has cha turned it into one of the most powerful tactics that we have seen uh, through a tactic tester from Ryan Cassidy. So thank you very much once again to Ryan uh, for supplying these saves and these, these tactics, of course. If you want to get your hands on it, you have to join the Discord and you can download it or you can just copy what I have shown you so far on this video. But if you go onto the Discord, the link is down below. It will take you straight to there and you can go onto Ryan's Tactics, a little tab on the left-hand side, and just search for the name uh, that I have given you and you can then find the tactic as well as all of the other tactics that he has provided in the past. But viewers, thank you very much for watching. If you can do so, please leave a like on the video. If you want to see some more tactic testers, let me know down in the comments. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. We have some player spotlights coming out, some more tactic testers, all of that good stuff and our brand new series starting very soon. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, remember to smash that like button. Hit the Patreon page if you want some early access to some videos or to sponsor a player. And here is a video that I think you might like.